What do you want to be when you grow up? This is a day in the life of your dream job. Now, if you go online to the website for the U.S. Department of Labor, you'll find how they detail the demand of various professions over the next 10 years. Now, right at the top of that list is that of software developer. Our expert today is not only going to share the essential requirements and education needed to be successful, but he's going to give his valuable insights on whether or not you want to be a specialist or a jack of all trades, which person gets the most work, the difference between procedural and object-oriented languages, and best yet, a day in the life of a software developer. Now, I gotta tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody else, but I think our expert today is like the Latin James Bond. He's got the name for it, Fernando. Let's go check it out. And I loved it. It was so easy for me to do that I didn't even have to study, and I aced all my tests to the point that the instructor for my last midterm told me that if I, was able, if I was able to answer the question he was giving me at that moment, I didn't have to take the last midterm. And I did, and I aced it, and I got 100%. So that's when I realized that maybe that was the line of business for me. Be prepared to, one, earn a degree. 80% of developers hold a bachelor's degree in computer science or computer engineering. Two, supplement your education with ongoing certification in new and evolving trends and code languages. Three, get experience. Find a way to become an intern, create your own side projects. Nothing can replace hands-on experience. And four, pound the pavement. Hardworking, skilled developers are always in demand somewhere. Keep applying and trust it will pay off. We are given a set of requirements and then we sit down and write code. And write, writing code is like writing whatever, an essay, a novel. It's just that you use a specific set of words to tell the computer what to do. Um, on a daily basis, uh, I use other tools as well as um, software that allows me to write code easier, what we call text editors. It's like a basic text editor, but with other features for programmers. Uh, obviously, you need a computer, a good one, uh, a reliable one. And, um, and we use uh, a lot of other tools that are based or hosted on a server, like a database. The difference between procedural languages and uh, computer object-oriented languages is that in a procedural language you will have to write lots of codes to describe one thing. Within an object-oriented type of language, you can write one piece of code and call it an object and access that and the characteristics of that object from anywhere in the program. So, for example, C++ and Java are object-oriented languages. Uh, all the languages like Fortran and COBOL are procedural languages. In today's world, you have to know a bit of everything. You never know where you're going to end up working as a computer programmer or a software developer. As technology evolves, it's really hard to keep up with the new things that are coming up. So the best thing is to remain at work. If you're always employed, you are, you're always going to face new challenges and you have to adapt to those new challenges. But I guess the best way will be to keep up to date going to seminars and taking special courses or even going back to school to learn something new. Databases are really important because um, that's where we store all the data that we get from our patients. Um, so for example, when we collect um, information from different patients for a different study, um, you, don't, you have to store that somewhere, and it has to be stored in a way that can be analyzed by statisticians so we can um, see what the trends are with the data that we're getting. So a database is the ideal solution because uh, it, it lets you manipulate the data, download it, upload it quickly, and in a secure manner. So a database is just basically a, a big bank of information. Uh, in my case, I, I come from, a, from Venezuela, third world country, where I had a really good life. We had everything, but because of the political situation and economical situation, I had to leave the country. And that was a, a sad experience that hurt a lot of people in my family and myself. But I saw it as an opportunity because then it meant that I had another chance at life. So when I came to Canada, I, was, I had nothing. I had to start all, all over again. Uh, I decided to do it. I, I've never worked in my life for a living. I always studied and I decided to then go back to work and study at the same time. It was hard, but I welcomed the challenge. It was a great opportunity. It taught me so much. And I guess that's the reason why I'm here and, and I plan to keep going because there, there's 
nothing, there's nothing to stop me, really. Um, so it's always up to you if you want to be successful or not. This industry is a very cyclical industry. Uh, Ten years ago, we had the dot-com boom, and then it kind of crashed the bubble. Um, everything went down, programmers were being laid off, and people kind of say, oh, this is it, this is the end. But there was, there's always a place for the good people. There's always a place for successful people to be in. So it doesn't matter what you do, if you, you want to go into computer programming or you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, or whatever. If you, are, if you work hard and you set your goals, you can achieve it and you'll be successful and there, there will always be a place for you. One of the big myths myth about programmers is like we look like nerds, we use glasses, we pants up to here, but as you can see, I mean, I look pretty decent and I'm not bad with the ladies. I mean, come on, it's my Latin blood, I'm, I'm a Latin American guy. I mean, you were born with something, you are going to live your life and accumulate all this kind of stuff and then you're going to go away to the next world and you're going to go away with nothing. So you might as well risk everything, work hard for your life, if it works, work. If it doesn't, at least you had the experience and you can say, I tried it and it was a lot of fun. What do you want to be when you grow up? If you go to the... the, the, the Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again.